Let's get you all the business news now and the market regained some lost ground in the fag end of the session as RIL marched its way among the top index gainers. However, selling is seen in stocks like TCS, Infosys, Wipro and Bajaj Twins. My colleague Hiral joins us with more information. Markets end lower in a volatile session and clearly Nifty ended below the 19,300 mark and the Sensex fell nearly 280 points. Uh, overall, if you go to see in terms of uh, markets, the benchmark stocks, you know, did see a slight recovery and this was on Reliance Industries which reversed losses to lead the indices after it announced 21st August as the listing date of its financial arm. You had Adani Group of stocks on the other hand which gained as their total market capitalization actually jumped to the highest level in six months in intraday session. IT stocks led the fall, whereas media and PSU banking stocks were marginally higher as well. You had Sensex, which ended below the 65,000 mark in trade today. Uh, overall, power and were the stocks which were gaining in trade and the broader markets were also on the losing end. The breath was pretty much in favor of the bulls. Uh, Adani Enterprises, Sports, Aisha Motors, Nestle and Britannia, these were the top gainers in trade today, whereas on the losing end you had names like Hero Moto, TCS, Tech Mahindra, Hindalco as well as Infosys. Uh, we already mentioned about the other, other, other Adani group companies uh, which added over 50,000 crores to the group market capitalization. Uh, Reliance Industries advanced after it confirmed your financial services Services listing date as the 21st of August. Lupin acquired German brands uh, on the back of which there was some momentum there. Indian Hume Pipe was up in trade on the back of an order win from the Odisha government. Uh, GMM Fordler and Panapuram Finance both were in focus today and this was on the back of the bulk deals that happened on these counters. Phenolix Cable surged in trade and this was on the back of the increase in target price that we saw from Jefferies. Uh, Yathank surged on the back of the uh, first quarter numbers. Uh, Sula Vineyards jumped in trade as well because the long weekend was really a good one for them. That's what they indicated. And you had South Indian Bank which jumped in trade after a large trade as well as RBI's nod for the new MD and CEO. Concord Biotech also listed at a premium to its issue price. So a lot of stock specific action in markets but clearly uh, there was pressure and the decline has continued and the fourth week of decline in over 16 months is what we've seen. Back to you. Earlier this month, global banking group Morgan Stanley upgraded India to overweight while downgrading China. While speaking to BQ Prime on the rationale behind the upgrade, Morgan Stanley's Jonathan Garner attributed it to India's inclusive policy framework throughout the decade. India will soon become a safe haven for global investors, says Jonathan Garner. Listen in. If you look at it economically, India's economy is not that integrated with China. It has relatively low trade exposure, unlike Australia, Korea, Taiwan. Wow. Um, and obviously, it has exposure to the US cycle. But one of the features that our colleague Ridham Desai and, and ourselves have mentioned is go back to uh, 2013, 10 years ago this summer, um, the Indian market had a much higher beta to the US market then, over one times on the beta, it's about 0.4 now, um, and, and a much more vulnerable currency uh, in, the, in the environment of uh, expectations at that point of a Fed hike cycle. Now we've had a really major Fed hike cycle, and though the, the rupee has been somewhat weak, it's actually had a lower degree of depreciation than the Chinese renminbi. And of course, that's all because the policy framework in India is much stronger than 10 years ago. The fiscal deficit is much better. The balance of payments is in a very solid position. And so this, these are all structural bull features that, um, that make India a very attractive place to be. It it's almost has safe haven characteristics right now, which is very different from 10 years ago. Moving on, metals are in focus today. The index ending in green after trading lower on the news that China's uh, new home prices fell 0.23% in July and real estate investment declined 8.5% year on year. JSW Steel ended in the red on the back of news that it is eyeing 75% of tech's coal business. A Jindal stainless on the back of revision in nifty indices ended higher by 2.7%, whereas Godavari Par ended flat. The Reserve Bank of India has issued new rules on penal charges on loan accounts to ensure safe lending practices. These guidelines will come into effect from 1st of January next year. My colleague Pragati Oberoi gets us more details. And Pragati, what do these rules mean for the lenders and borrowers? The Reserve Bank of India has stepped in to regulate the penal charges that banks and other lenders use in the case of non-compliance. Now that's mainly when you've either missed an EMI payment or have defaulted on a loan.
This was very important because several customers complained about high penal charges and even the interest that is levied on those charges. What exactly RBI has done here is, first of all, if a penal charge is imposed, the lender will not be able to add any further interest on it. Banks and other lenders will also not be allowed to bring in any additional components on the interest charge. Penal charges will need to be kept reasonable and can't be higher for any specific loan product. So hypothetically, now you can't be made to pay a higher penal charge than any of your neighbors as well. Also, individual borrowers like you and me will not face higher charges than the businesses. And finally, it will be mandatory for lenders to inform the customers of any penal charges. Now, all of this comes into effect from 1st January 2024. And by that time, banks will have to put their internal policies in place and also inform the customers. In a significant move towards enhancing urban transportation and promoting electric mobility, the union cabinet has given its nod to the PM e-bus seva scheme. This initiative is aimed at expanding city bus operations by deploying 10,000 electric buses through public-private partnership model. PQ Prime spoke to a global EV bus manufacturer to understand how this move will aid the sector. We had about 5 to 7 percent market share in 2020. Uh, two in 23, we ended up with 20% market share. Uh, it's very, uh, um, I would say that uh, uh, the CAGR expected growth of the EV industry in next 10 years is going to be about 45%. We want to be in the top three. And uh, you know that Ashok Leyland have been number one in the bus segment. So uh, we have that advantage and we, and we believe Switch will be a major player in India on electric mobility as well. Keynes Technology is expecting 30 to 50 percent CAGR growth in the next few years. That's the word coming in from CFO Jairam Sampath. Speaking to BQ Prime's Neeraj Shah, Sampath says the company anticipates 9 to 10 percent net profit growth this financial year and shares the outlook for the company. We are saying that about 9 to 10 percent of PAT uh, uh, will be there at the end of the year. And we don't think that this profile will deteriorate anymore. If at all anything, due to scale economies, we might do a tad better uh, in the coming years. This year, we have set about 1,700 crores as the guidance for this year. Maybe it will go to about 1,800 crores in terms of business. And we have a strong order book. So obviously, that is also going to push our revenues along uh, in a strong way. We have an order book about 3,000 crores at the beginning of July. So uh, going forward uh, for the next year already, out of this, you know, even if we do as per whatever we have uh, planned, uh, about 1,500 of these will have to be uh, probably con considered for the next year. So we are looking forward to uh, a good growth in the next year too. And uh, on a CAGR basis, uh, anywhere between 30 to 50 percent growth we can expect in this kind of uh, scenario. And um, it's our estimation that qualitatively these are all, let's say, quote unquote organic kind of growth, existing type of products and existing customers and so on. And that's a roundup of all the business news of the day.